It's been a while since we've done the twist, so let's go twist again. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge, where I hope to educate, inspire, and spark the imagination of anyone interested in the traditional art and craft of blacksmithing. Today we're going to look at a braided twist. This is really a lot easier than it looks. There's no actual braiding involved. It's all twisting and a little bit of forge welding. I'm going to leave an inch, inch and a half on each end to allow for the forge weld. And you want to twist all of these up in the same direction the same number of times. So this is going to be three full revolutions, I think. It pays to count it after you're done. Busy talking to the camera, not busy counting. Yep, three. One, two, three. And just give them a little bit of a straightening up here. I'm not too worried about the ends being weird. Like I say, we're going to forge weld this next. So you should have three of these now with twists that all look the same. I'm just going to use a couple of pieces of baling wire. Remember, these are still hot. You can let these cool down and you can uh, tack weld them with an arc welder if you want to. But just get these to wrap up in a nice little bundle. And put your baling wire where you're not going to make, make the forge weld because you don't want to weld the wire into the piece. So I got one near one end and one near the middle, and that leaves the other end free for my weld. This certainly gets easier if you uh, let them cool down first. So now we're just going to heat this end up and get it ready for forge welding. It's going to take a little bit of finagling to get everything to come together. So my first heat is just to work these down and get them into a better bundle and then I'll flux it and then we'll bring it up to welding heat. These can be really kind of cranky to get to come together nicely so you just do the best you can. You might need to mess with your baling wire wraps. I suppose if you did this all the time, you could design a pair of tongs designed to hold the, the three-part bundle just perfectly.
But that's about the best we're going to do. So they're kind of loose. They're not as tight together as I would like. But all I do is kind of move them around in circles and once we start welding them, they'll stay together better. I'm going to turn them around over and under and back and forth and just try to get them to heat evenly. And I'm shoveling coke onto the fire. I would not put green coal anywhere near the fire during a welding heat. That's just uh, going to suck the heat right out of there. These are getting close. They're, they're up to a bright orange. We want a lemon yellow color. make the initial weld in this swedge to help hold the pieces together and, and force them into a tighter bundle as we weld. Getting very close. Let's weld. Initially all I'm worried about is just getting a good so they want to stay together. I want to try and keep the twist area out of the swedge so I don't mess up my twist. But that is nicely welded. I'm going to take another heat just to refine that a little bit and a little bit more flux. Not very much though. I'm sure it's welded, you can square it up at the face of the anvil. Don't get this too small. Think about what you're going to do with this twist. Kind of like we did on the other end. Those aren't ready to weld, so I'm not welding them just getting them tight together. I'm going to get rid of this piece of baling wire now so I don't accidentally weld it to the, the piece. I'm just a light fluxing. Weld it up in the sled. More solid than the first end is to the face of the handle. I'm going to scarf this for a weld onto some sort of a tool handle. It's something like that. Scarf separating there, so I'll be careful with that. Put it back in the fire and uh, weld it again. But you can see that scarf kicked up there. So the heels are welded, but the scarfs are not. Got the one scarf welded down nicely. Cut back and do the other one. Ideally, you do all this in one heat, but if you need more heats to get the well, take more heats. Now we stick down that last scarf. And even the weld out. Don't work too much right in there, or you'll end up making a thin spot. Just a taper. Weld at the 3 8 bar up into the body of the twist there. And 
Notice I keep that twist all the way off the anvil so that I haven't damaged it. There, and that would be a nice fireplace poker or something like that. I think I'll go ahead and draw this out and put a little ring on that end before we finish the twist and then it'll just be done. So we are going to finish the twist. I'm just going to go ahead and draw this out at a welding heat so it helps refine the weld while I'm doing this. I'm going to go right up short of where the twist starts. So I've got enough to get a wrench on when we do the twist. Working over the horn makes this pretty quick, especially at welding heat. It's amazing how much easier things move when they're hot. Start rounding it up. Drew it out square, then I made it an octagon, now we're going to make it round. And remember there are nine or six bars in that weld all the way out to the end. So it's a lot like working with wrought iron. You don't, don't want to do a lot of shaping when it's cold. Put a little curl on there. Then I'm going to bend the whole thing around into a ring. Start by offsetting it a little there. Cool the curl so I don't worry too much about hitting it. It's a place where a little round bick would be really handy since the corner of my anvil is pretty blunt. So that's all I want to do there. That way it can hang on a hook. Now we get to twist it. And see if I've been right this whole time about what it's going to do. So here is our bar all ready to twist. And we initially twisted it clockwise, so we want to twist it this time counterclockwise. And I'm messing up my curl. I'm afraid of that. Let me get that hot again and go the other direction with this. And by other direction I just mean I'm going to lock the, the ring and the, the vise. I'm still going to untwist counterclockwise until I just like the results. Place a rawhide mallet helps. I need to clean up my ring just a little bit, so back in the fire there. That completes our braided twist. It's made out of six pieces of quarter inch round bar, twisted in pairs, so there's three pairs, and those are then forge welded together and back twisted. Then we also added welding it to a handle, so now this can be a nice fireplace poker or perhaps a rake or a shovel handle for the forge. Who knows what it might be. I'll figure something out. I've got about 30 inches of material there I can make a handle out of or a tool shaft out of, so it might be just about anything by the time we're done with it. Really a nice handle. It makes for a nice large handle and it really 
mystifies people how it was done. Really not that complicated. There's no actual knotting or braiding or anything else. It's just twist three things, put them together, and then untwist them, and this is what you get. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you can give it a thumbs up. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to support the channel financially and help ensure that I can keep making these videos, there are links for both PayPal and Patreon down in the description, and you may contribute to help support the financial cost of the videos. It's just a donation, there's no obligation, and the videos will remain free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, but do stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.